Well, let me begin by uh, welcoming you to Northwestern University. Uh, my name is Mark Hersom. I'm a professor of material science and engineering and also chemistry here at the university. Uh, the co-author on, on our paper, uh, Alex Green, who's a graduate student in my lab, unfortunately is uh, back at home in Canada uh, for Christmas at the moment, uh, so I'll be representing him uh, today. So we work in the general area of nanoelectronic materials. Uh, our lab focuses on two major approaches. Uh, one is to take successful pre-existing materials such as silicon and then mounting on top of them other uh, emerging materials such as organic molecules which can impart new functionality to silicon such as tailored chemical reactivity which you may need for sensing. The other major direction that we pursue is the exploration of completely novel materials. Uh, these tend to be carbon-based such as carbon nanotubes and graphene. And in particular, for our JFIS Chem Letters perspective, we are focusing on graphene, an electronic material, material which has really emerged in the past five years or so due to the ability of researchers to produce high quality samples, at least at a research scale. Uh, this uh, work has come to the point where many potential applications for graphene have been demonstrated in research labs. Uh, these include applications in electronics. Some people are exploring applications in energy, such as photovoltaics, or even in biology, such as biosensing and therapeutics. And as a result, there's now a need to produce not just research scale quantities, but larger quantities, which would be necessary for technological development. And in our JFIS Chem Letter perspective, that's what we're focusing on, is the production of graphene at larger scales using chemical methods and in particular focusing on the production of very high quality homogeneous samples. So I should uh, begin by explaining why homogeneity is so critical in particular for graphene and more generally in the field of nanomaterials. Uh, the basic reason is that unlike macroscopic materials, nanomaterials have properties that depend upon their size, shape and other geometrical parameters. And as a result, uh, if you try to produce a nanomaterial and you have any lack of homogeneity in the structure, this will yield lack of homogeneity in the properties and therefore inhomogeneous performance and applications, which typically is not tolerated by consumers. And as a result, that's, that's the principal challenge. How do you take nanomaterials and produce uniform size distribution and therefore uniform properties? That's what our lab has been focusing on. And it turns out that the way that we've pursued this is to borrow a technique from chemistry, and in particular biochemistry, called density gradient ultra centrifugation. In fact, the instruments we're sitting in front of here today are ultra centrifuges that we use for this processing. DGU, or density gradient ultra centrifugation, is widely used in biochemistry for sorting biomolecules such as DNA, proteins, carbohydrates, and what we have done in our research is adapted that technique to nanomaterials to sort them by their structure and therefore their properties. Uh, the final example where we hope to touch everyday life is in the biomedical arena, developing sensors which can detect disease at an earlier stage and therefore enable more effective treatments. And also in the area of therapeutics where we try to develop schemes for delivering more effective drugs where they're needed and when they're needed. The Journal of Physical Chemistry has been uh, very valuable uh, to me personally. Uh, I'm trained as an electrical engineer. Uh, I realized uh, in my research that chemistry uh, could play an important role in this field. It could enable us to make new materials, to process them in novel ways, and therefore enable new types of electronic devices. Of course, uh, JFIS Chem Letters is a brand new journal, and I think it holds a great promise for decreasing the time from discovery to dissemination. This will accelerate progress in the field and allow uh, the overall field of physical chemistry to advance at a more rapid pace.